If you like these videos and you wanna see them a day before they go up on YouTube, head over to Library. It's an awesome decentralized alternative to YouTube and I absolutely love it. Hey everybody, it's your friend and your guy Gardner. I'm here today to talk about some weird stuff that's going down in the Linux world of hypotheticals and what ifs. Uh, we're talking about what Eric S. Raymond said. Uh, if you don't know who he is, he's an open source luminary and fellow gun nut. Uh, he was the guy who actually uh, wrote the, uh, the Cathedral and the Bazaar, which was an essay and then a book, uh, it paints this really interesting picture of why open source uh, is so successful, even in the face of proprietary monolithic offerings. Both are excellent and I highly recommend you check them out. Uh, but he said something on his blog that has got a couple of people up in a tizzy. So let's talk about what he actually said. So he believes that Microsoft will someday soon transition away from the NT kernel of Windows in order to uh, create an emulation layer on top of the Linux kernel, basically turning Windows 10 into Microsoft's own desktop Linux distribution, but that has like a backwards compatibility layer like Wine or Proton with old Windows applications. And you know what? I think that he's actually onto something here. I, I've been saying something similar to this for a while, uh, but I thought it was a little more uh, nefarious than he seems to think. Uh, so let's talk about what he actually said and uh, figure out where we land or where at least I land on this. I'd, I'd love to know your guys' thoughts. So leave comments down below if you think that he's right, if you think that he's wrong, if you think that Microsoft has another plan up their sleeve. Let me know down in the comments. So the first thing that ESR mentions is the fact that Microsoft is making the majority of their money through Azure, with most Azure instances running Linux nodes rather than Windows. You know, Microsoft is seeing the way the wind is blowing and they hop on that train. I tend to agree uh, with Eric on this point. If you don't know what Azure is, uh, Wikipedia describes it as a cloud computing service created by Microsoft for building, testing, deploying, and managing applications and services through Microsoft managed data centers. Okay, fair enough. Microsoft is making a ton of their money. The majority of their income comes through Azure. And I mean, it doesn't take a whole lot of uh, observation to realize that uh, PCs are not uh, selling as well as they have historically. Uh, Microsoft isn't making a whole lot of money from Windows 10 at this point, and the fact that PC sales are down uh, makes Windows 10 development more of a burden than a boon to the company. And that's only going to continue to get worse as more and more you know, normal people end up using a, a phone or a tablet rather than a PC. The next thing that uh, ESR points out is that Wine and Proton are excellent ways to run legacy Windows applications on Linux. In fact, in some instances, it's actually a better and more uh, fulfilling experience to use Windows applications through Wine or Proton than it is to actually try and run these old games or applications on Windows itself. And that's because Wine and Proton are being developed specifically to maintain these older games while Windows is more focused on the business side of uh, backwards compatibility. ESR himself said that Proton, which is a tool that he uses to play World of Warships, which I think is adorable, uh, he says, uh, it's not perfect, but it's getting close. And, and you know what? I definitely agree with that statement as well. I mean, Proton is fabulous. And the majority of Windows only games on Steam uh, are pretty good. Uh, they're not they're not all perfect, but they're pretty good. And even some games on Steam that have Linux binaries run better with the Windows version through Proton, which I just find fascinating. Now, compounding all this, ESR points to the fact that Microsoft have been porting some of their desktop applications, including the Edge browser, the new Chromium-based Edge browser over to Linux. But let's be completely honest about Edge coming to Linux. Most of the hard work was done by the Chromium team. However, the fact that Microsoft are going with an open source solution like Chromium for their web browser kind of suggests to me that they're open to this idea. Take something like a traditionally Microsoft technology, change the under uh, the underlayment, uh, the, the, the core functionality of the application to use open source uh, alternatives and then uh, present it as their own product. I mean, 
I think that that's a great case for, for this kind of thing to happen. The other thing that Microsoft has been doing is including Windows subsystem for Linux. They have put a lot of money and time into WSL and WSL2, and even to the point where they're contributing code, uh, specific drivers for WSL2 uh, the Linux kernel. Something like that would make the hypothetical transition down the road of migrating Windows 10 to become a essentially a Linux distribution that much easier. So ESR has put all the pieces together and in his mind, the facts are quite clear. Microsoft understands that NT's days are limited. And when I say NT, I'm talking about Microsoft Windows NT kernel. That's what we're talking about here. According to ESR, Microsoft will be uh, basically abandoning the NT kernel and replacing it with Linux and a compatibility layer, or as ESR is calling it, an emulation layer. Then over time, the emulation layer will diminish until Microsoft doesn't have the cost of developing the Windows core operating system itself or any of the uh, an emulation tools or any of the emulation layer that they did to migrate people over. But here's the deal. This is the thing that a lot of people get wrong about Wine and Proton. At least on the desktop, whether you're running Linux or Windows, applications are running x86. Like they are x86 binaries. The only difference between the two operating systems are the APIs that are exposed to the applications running on the platform. Microsoft has DLLs, they have the NTFS file system, and stuff like DirectX. Linux has libraries like glibc and ext4 file systems or betterfs file systems and Vulkan. So what Wine does is it tries to provide a clean room implementation of the Microsoft DLLs, which those implementations basically translate into Linux system calls. It's that simple, and most of the time, the overhead is pretty minimal with Wine and Proton. And honestly, if Microsoft wanted to take a crack at doing the same thing, seeing as they have all the source code and all the trade secrets available to them, they'd be able to do a pretty bang up job if they set their mind to it. And, and if you look at it from this perspective, the, the, the facts that Microsoft has already exposed stuff like DirectX to Linux uh, subsystem for Windows or Windows subsystem for Linux, it's all kind of very interesting. Now, at the end of uh, ESR's blog post, and there's a link down in the description, he said, quote, the OS itself and its user land tools will have been Linux underneath for a while and a carefully preserved Windows UI over top. Third-party software providers will stop shipping Windows binaries in favor of ELF binaries with a pure Linux API, and Linux finally wins the desktop wars, not by displacing Windows, but by co-opting it. Perhaps this was always how it had to be. While I do think all that sounds pretty nice, I would still be concerned that something like DirectX would stick around as proprietary garbage to keep people locked into Microsoft's ecosystem. But at the same time, if Eric is right about this, I could actually see them embracing open standards in a non-nefarious way if it meant maximizing their profits through other avenues like Azure. Perhaps ESR didn't go far enough though. Maybe Microsoft buys Codeweavers, the developers of Wine, and just extends it. But if that's even a remote possibility, perhaps Valve ought to purchase Codeweavers to extinguish that threat. I don't know, I'd love to know what you guys think about this. Do you think that it's possible in any way, shape or form that Microsoft would basically turn Windows 10 into their own desktop Linux distribution? Let me know down in the comments. I would love to know what you guys think about this one. That's gonna do it for this video, and I wanna thank Nima Panahi and the other 108 amazing people over on Patreon who make the work that I do here possible. If it weren't for them, I wouldn't be able to do this, so thanks, guys. If you believe in the work that I do, you can help support the show over there. You can join the TLG Army uh, with a small monthly donation. I really appreciate your guys' support. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I've been Gardner, your friend and your guy, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Have a blessed day.